Welcome to Keyboard Jockeying for Finance 372. Coding is a nonlinear process. No one sits down, writes out line after line of nearly perfect code, runs it, and calls it a day. Instead, we all write a line or two, edit them, write a different version, look something up, add a line above, delete this, edit that, and after a few hours, your code works, but you realize it's only a dozen lines long. Because coding requires so much back and forth editing, learning keyboard shortcuts makes it much more efficient. Today, I'll teach you the shortcuts I use every day while programming. You'll see in future videos how much they speed up the process. The shortcuts I show you today are for Windows. All these should work on Macs as well. You just have to replace a couple of keys. So every time I say Control in Windows, that's Command in, in Mac. Every time I say Alt in Windows, that's Option on a Mac. All right, another thing I'll note is that laptops are going to be missing some of the keys I use here, including page up, page down, end, and home in many cases. So this is why I recommend that you get an external keyboard for coding. Okay, let's start by talking about how to navigate around our Jupyter cells. So as you can see here, we have this blue bar on the side. This indicates which cell we have selected or which cell we're focused on right now. We can go up and down to navigate which cell we're focused on using the up and down arrows on our keyboard. So we get to this cell, we want to say we want to edit this cell. We press enter now to enter the cell. And this is called entering edit mode. In edit mode, we can then change what is in the cell. When we're done editing, we can press escape to escape edit mode and go back to what's called command mode. Command mode is where you can change which cell you're looking at. You can also in command mode do all of these commands. If you don't have an up and down arrow, you can use K and J to go up and down. If you want to select multiple things, select multiple cells, I can do that by holding down shift and doing up and down arrows. Okay, if I've selected multiple cells, now I can merge them. Let's say I select these two cells, I can merge them by holding down shift and pressing M. That merges the cells together. Now, this cell is a markdown cell, as are most cells in this notebook. We can change that to a code cell by pressing Y in command mode. You can see now it's switched to a code cell. Switch it back to markdown, I press M. Now this only works in command mode. When I'm in edit mode and I can edit the cells, of course if I press M, that just types an M. To get back to command mode, we press escape. Now we can go back to Y, code, M, markdown. And next, we can also use keyboard shortcuts to change the heading. So you can see this cell has a heading five because it's got five pound signs. Instead of typing out five pound signs though, we can do this faster using keyboard shortcuts. So if we go back to command mode, we can do press four and that changes it to four pound signs or header four. Three, two, one, do the same thing. So we use five for this. In command mode, we can also move around these cells. Okay, so one way to do this without keyboard shortcuts is by clicking and dragging them. You can drag your cells up and down this way. But you can also do this with keyboard shortcuts by using copying and pasting. So the way this works is with C, V, and X. If I want to create a copy of this cell, I can press C, and then I can go up above and press V to create a copy below. Now to delete these cells, I can press D twice. You have to press it twice just to make sure you're not accidentally deleting cells. Of course, I can also cut and paste. Cut is X, paste, I go down, I press V, and I paste. All right, let's move this back up where it belongs. So let's do a cut with X, and we want to paste it below right here. All right, now let's say I don't like what I just did. I can always undo it by pressing Z. That's the command. Okay, but I actually do like that, so let me paste it again below here. Instead of copying and pasting cells, I can also create new cells above and below by pressing A and B respectively. So if I press A right now, I create a new cell above. Let's delete that. I can press B and create a new cell below. Let's delete that. Okay, well, let's say we get into edit mode and we actually want to edit a cell. One thing we could do is we can press Control Shift Dash to split a cell at the current cursor. So let's go back up to this cell that we created up here that we merged together. We don't actually want these merged together. So let's split them using control shift dash. The way I remember this is I think about the dash as sort of a scissors line cutting through the cell right at the point of your cursor. There's also a bunch of commands that work both in edit mode and command mode. And these are some of the most often used commands in this whole sheet. These commands are primarily about running cells. So let's say we want to run this cell and create markdown out of this pound sign, pound sign, pound sign, pound sign. The way you can do that, of course, with your mouse is to go up to here, but there's a shortcut for that. You can do control enter and that runs the cell. Okay, then I can go down to here and I can do Control Enter on this cell as well. Now perhaps it would be faster instead of doing Control Enter and then down and then Control Enter again, you can do 
shift enter. And what shift enter does is it runs the current cell and shifts down to the next one. Alt enter does something different. It runs the current cell and creates a new cell below it. Okay, so down here we can just to practice, let's run this cell the normal way. Let's run this cell to create a new cell below. And then let's just run this cell to move on to the next cell below it. The last universal commands in Jupyter, you can press Control S at any time to save your notebook, like in most programs. If we want to go back and forth between different tabs at the top here, so we have a launcher tab and a keyboard jockeying tab, instead of going back and forth with our mouse, we can do Control Shift open bracket to go this way, Control Shift close bracket to go that way. Okay, and if we want to close a notebook, we can do Control Shift Q and press close. So once we're in a cell, whether it's a markdown cell or a code cell, we're going to spend a lot of time editing the content of those cells. So I'm going to show you a bunch of keyboard shortcuts that are super helpful with that. These shortcuts work in any program, really. They can be used in Microsoft Word or Chrome or uh, Gmail or whatever else you're using. The first and most obvious ones are using the left and right arrow to move your cursor left and right. This operates one character at a time. Next, let me show you that if you hold down Control and do left arrow or right arrow, now you're moving one word at a time instead of one character at a time. So this can get you much faster if you're trying to scroll across a line. If you really want to go fast all the way to the beginning or the end of a line, you can use the home key or the end key. If you want to go even farther than that and go all the way to the beginning of the cell, hold down control and then press home. That goes all the way to the beginning. You hold down control and you press end and you go all the way to the end of the cell. If you do this in Microsoft Word or some other program, it will go all the way to the beginning or the end of your document. Okay, now the last thing I'll show you is if you just want to go up and down one line, of course, you can use the up and down arrows. Once you're moving your cursor around with keyboard shortcuts, you may also want to select text with your keyboard shortcuts. I can hold down Shift, and anything I move my cursor over will be selected. But now we know we can move our cursor faster by using Control. So if I go to the beginning here, this line, I hold down Shift, and I press Control, now I'm selecting one word at a time, and I can get much farther across here. One pattern I use all the time is if I want to delete a line, I can, I can press Home, Shift, End, and that selects the whole line, and then just delete. And you'll see when you, once you practice this, it can be very fast, right? I can just do that, and then the line's gone. I can do Control Z, and it's back. So speaking of deleting, there's actually two different delete keys on a Windows keyboard. One is called Backspace key, right here, one is the delete key right here. Okay, if we have text selected, they do the, actually do the same thing. They just delete that text. So I can select some text, delete it, or I can select some text and backspace it and end up in the same place. If I don't have text selected, though, they do different things. So if I have my cursor right here and I press delete, it deletes forward. It deletes the next character after your cursor. If I don't have text selected and I use the backspace key, then I delete backwards. I delete the character to the left of my cursor. We can combine delete and backspace with the control key to delete faster. So let's say I want to delete this whole word here, selected. I could do dot, 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 delete, 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 delete. And then you have to be really careful in your timing to make sure you delete exactly the right amount. Instead, I can just press, hold down control and then press delete and it deletes that whole word. And all I have to do is fix the spacing. Okay, I can also do that going backwards. So I can get to the end of selected. I can press control backspace and that deletes the whole word. Next up is copying and pasting. You probably all know this already, but just so we're all on the same page, Control C, copy something, Control X, cut something, Control V, paste something. One trick you may not be aware of, which again only works on Windows, is that you can press Windows V, so you can hold on the Windows key and press V, and that will bring up a screen that lets you choose among many recently copied items. So if you copy something and paste it, copy something else and paste that, you can actually press Windows V and go back and paste the thing you copied two times ago. All right, undo and redo is Control Z and Control Y. Um, Control Shift Z also does undo. The last little section here is about editing code cells. Everything we've done here works in a code cell. We can move our cursor like this, we can copy, we can paste, we can select just using all of these tricks in a code cell as well. But there are some special shortcuts that only work in code cells. Okay, so let's look at those. First is commenting. So commenting, we talked about that in a previous video, it's gonna be very important for our code. We can toggle commenting for a whole line by pressing the control slash key combination. Okay, so this line is currently commented, but if I hold down control and press slash, it will uncomment it. If I hold down control and press slash again, it will comment it. The other keyboard shortcut I want to tell you about that works only in code cells is auto completion. So this is where modern software makes coding a little bit easier. 
Let's say I'm trying to do something really simple, which is print. I could type out print, or I could just type PR and then press tab. The tab shortcut brings up this autocomplete menu, and it looks for all the things starting with PR that we could do. So there's the print function, which is what we're looking for. There's also something called a property. We can do precision, pre-run. You can go up and down among these options using the up and down arrow keys. The one you find the one you want, you press enter and it auto completes for you. This is a simple example. I think we can all remember print, but to illustrate the power of auto completion, let's use this math library. So let's say we want to print something from the math library, but we don't remember exactly what. We can type math dot and not even start the word and then press tab. What it does here is it recognizes we're okay, we're going into the math library. We'd like something from the math library and it's going to give us all of the functions in the math library. So you can say, ah, you know what? I think I want is a factorial. And then I could probably put the factorial of three. I can run this and I see three factorial is six. Okay, so the way you often code is not typing print math.factorial three. The way I often code is pr math.factorial three. Okay, this helps a few ways. One is that it's faster once you're used to it. And two is it's also less error prone because you're not actually typing out factorial. You're not going to end up with a little typo in here where you accidentally did AI because the autocomplete menu spells it out for you. All right, I hope you can see how useful these keyboard shortcuts can be, how much they can speed things up. And you'll see in future videos, I'm almost never using my mouse when I code. Your goal when you're practicing this stuff is try to never use your mouse. See how far you can get that way. Forcing yourself to do it this way will be slower at first, but you'll end up being much faster and much faster in all of your productivity work on computers. So Excel is much faster with keyboard shortcuts. Word is much faster. Chrome is much faster. Everything speeds up the more you use your keyboard instead of your mouse.